You know what makes a professional photographer's pictures stand out from all the iPhone pictures? <laughs> Skill, but also the lens you put on there. So we're gonna share our three favorite portrait lenses for real pro photographers. Well, we have a little disagreement on one of them, but we'll get to that later. This video is sponsored by Professional Photographers of America. Join a community of over 34,000 photographers and find equipment insurance, education, and business tools made specifically for small business owners like you. Okay, these are presented in no specific order, but what's your first one? The, the first one is the best one. The one you absolutely need, the okay. workhorse, the 70 to 200. So uh, go over there, I'll get some natural light photos of you. We'll show you how versatile this is. Bam, headshot, full body shot, horizontal, vertical. Now go move around, like pretend this is a kid's portrait shoot. No problem, you get close, so I can pull back, you step away, I can zoom right in. Oh, and at 200 millimeters, I get this crazy compression. Facial features are flattened, which some people like, but I also get this amazing bokeh, this crazy background blur that lets me eliminate the background. If I do have a distracting background, I just zoom in and it's all gone. I agree that the 70 to 200 is a very versatile lens, but I will say that within 70 to 200 millimeter lenses, there's a lot of variation with quality and focus breathing and other things you have to consider. Yeah, the absolute best you can do is to get your name brand 70-200 F2A, the latest generation. Those can be really expensive, usually $2,500 or so. If that's not in your budget, you could get an F4 lens. Those are less expensive because they gather less light, they have less background blur. They're also lighter. Yes, and after a long portrait session or a wedding, that can make a huge difference. You could also save money by getting a third party brand. So you wouldn't be going name brand with Sony or Nikon or Canon, but you could do something like a Tamron or a Sigma and save money and still have good quality lens. Some of those are excellent, but check the reviews on our channel because there are little intricacies that matter a lot, like the focus breathing. Some of them at 200 millimeters when you're up close, they're more like 130 millimeters and that can completely change the way you shoot. And others have really bad contrast where if you're shooting into the sun or something, it can all get washed out. I think that's something really important to consider. Let's say you can't control where the sun is like at a wedding. If you have a lens that isn't as high quality and you're shooting into the light, you'll get it. pictures that are washed out. There will be low contrast and they won't be very sharp. So if you know that you're gonna be shooting a high stakes situation like a wedding, I would spring for a more expensive model. All right, what's your lens? Hold on. I do like the versatility of a 70 to 200, but something interesting like an 85 millimeter prime is appealing to me for a few reasons. If you're shooting a zoom lens and you're shooting from 70 to 200 millimeters, you get a lot of different looks in your photos. But if you have a portfolio with a lot of prime shots, it makes your portfolio look more consistent, especially if you have a big aperture like I do. This is an F 1.2, you get kind of surreal looking background blur and it has a unique look. Now you can see that this is huge because it's an F1.2 lens. You can also get an 85 millimeter and an F1.4 and that would be a smaller lens and also a more affordable lens. When you're using the prime lens, you have to be more specific with your composition and sometimes working within that limitation actually makes me more creative, makes me a little more thoughtful about how I'm framing a shot. I'm gonna pair it with a strobe over here, show you some more deliberate photos and what they might look like. So Tony, get out from behind the camera. You, you're gonna model for me. Will you look off that way? Think about men's warehouse. Work it, Tony. Think about that time Kevin dropped the chili. And back at me. This lens is gorgeous, but there's one I like even more. But first. Don't forget to check out our sponsor, PPA, the nonprofit organization, the Professional Photographers of America with over 34,000 members just like you using their education to better themselves, using their insurance to protect their gear. Check out PPA today. Thank and don't you. forget to check out the Bridge the Gap program because they have incredible classes on business management. And that's definitely a part of your photo journey if you're doing this professionally. So yeah, thanks PPA. Use our link in the description below to get $25 off your PPA membership. Thanks PPA. And now back to debating our favorite lenses. Here's why I think the 50 is best. It's prime, so you can get crazy background blur, but it's a normal focal length, closer to what smartphone photographers use. And these wider focal lengths that aren't traditional portrait lengths feel more intimate, but 
you still get professional quality, lots of background blur. That's why a 50 f1.2 has become my favorite portrait lens. I, in your defense, I also think a 50 millimeter lens is pretty close to what the human eye sees, so it does look natural. And I think that it's a flattering focal length, uh, a good in between. But my favorite lens is the 24 to 70, specifically an f2.8. First of all, it's versatile, like we talked about with the 70 to 200, but you're not getting that extreme reach and you're getting a focal length we haven't covered with going way wider with 24 millimeters. And I know that traditionally, and especially in old school photography, that wasn't considered a portrait lens, but more and more that's becoming a more modern focal length because it feels casual, it feels more intimate, and it feels more candid. And definitely younger people are liking those wider focal lengths better. You can get that 24 millimeter look, fit more of someone's body in the frame, fit more people in the frame, but also because it's a zoom, you can zoom in and get the 70 millimeters, which is enough compression to have beautiful background blur and look professional and interesting. Let me also say that you're mentioning that the 50 millimeters of prime. I like primes. That's why I like the 85 millimeter. It forces you to work within one focal length, but it doesn't mean that it's a sharper lens anymore because the 24 to 70 that I have here, which is a Sony G Master, is incredibly sharp high contrast, low junkified. You know what I mean by junkified? No. Nobody does because I just does. made it up. There's no chromatic aberration or it's very, very low. It's not bad. Also, if you're shooting into the light, it's not so flared up that you lose all contrast and detail. So it's versatile. It works amazingly for portraits. It's also versatile in every other application. And this has got to be like my number one go-to lens for not just portraits, for, but everything. I have a one word rebuttal. Bokeh. Bokeh. You need more bokeh, especially if people are viewing images on small screens. The bokeh you get from a 24 to 70 f2.8 just isn't enough to really say this was taken with something better than a smartphone. But you see it, you feel it with the 50 f1.2, especially. That's why I appreciate it. And if you can't afford a 50 f1.2, then you could get $150 50 f1.8. And that, even for a beginning professional photographer, that separates you from all the smartphone photographers. Well, I don't think that we really need to compete on that front because I do agree, I like a lens that has an amazingly shallow depth of field because it looks just so surreal. It's very interesting. But F2.8 provides plenty of bokeh, especially at 70 millimeters. Look at these pictures here. They look great. The bokeh is beautiful. But it could have more bokeh. I can do that in post, watch this. Okay. You just lost. <laughs> in the comments down below, tell us your favorite portrait lens. Remember to click the link in the description to get $25 off your PPA membership. Thank you, PPA. And thank you to you. Bye.